Hey, hello, hello. Hey, Kat Miller here. I hope you are having a magical day today. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the real reason why content creation takes you so long. I've got a few different ideas that I am predicting, and I'm going to actually give you five of them. And I think you'll find yourself in this video. This video is for you if you're tired of spending hours and hours on creating content, and maybe you find yourself overthinking uh, and over analyzing and second guessing yourself and maybe rewriting things over and over again. Now I'm all for crafting. I'm all for creating quality work. What I'm talking about in this video is if you are doing it at the detriment of the rest of the other things in your business that need to get done and it's actually costing you and it's not that you're crafting and then it's getting you a great result you're spending a lot of time and it's not getting you a great result and so you feel like you're caught in this trap where you want to spend more time and make it better and better and better but if it's still not really working it can feel really discouraging because it's like well do I need to spend even longer so if you're second guessing some of what you're doing if you're wondering if your content is good enough to share if you kind of are doubting yourself and it's taking up too much of your time and you want to stop the cycle you want your your content to to lead to clients you want it to work you want it to be effective but you don't want it to take hours and hours every day I'm going to share with you how you can speed up your content creation process without sacrificing quality we do not want to compromise on quality because we want it to be quality but we don't have to have perfection in order to have effect effectiveness we do not need perfection, but we do want to be able to get our content to a point that is it is working. It's getting response. It's getting people joining your email list, downloading your free resource, coming to your event, booking into your calendar. These are some of the responses that we want from your content. And if this, this is not happening, it could be because you, it's taking up a lot of your time, but there are there. Are not they are <laughs> there are not the key things that need to be in those pieces of content that you're putting out. So if you want to have that confidence and that ease in your content creation, that you you know that your content is impactful and that it's changing lives and it is getting you clients, let's dive in. If you're joining us live, it is so nice to have you here. Could you please pop a hashtag live into the comments if you're here joining us live? And please drop comments throughout. I always love hearing from you. Love hearing your thoughts. Love hearing um, your opinion, what's standing out, what what anything that's jumping out to you. If you're here watching the replay, please drop a hashtag replay into the comments. It's always so nice to spend this time with you, whether you're live or watching this later. Now, to start with, I want to say this one thing that's really important. Some business coaches and gurus say, just get content out there fast. Like that is that is their their principle is is volume 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 and they would say just get you know multiple pieces out of con of content out there every every single day to stay top of mind and i want to explain why that isn't the best strategy for everybody in fact it's only really a great strategy if you are a influencer and you've already built a really big audience so it doesn't work so well for you if you're just starting out, if you're sole trainer and you don't have a big team doing your marketing for you. Sometimes we can hear the advice of these big gurus that have got millions of dollars and a big team behind them and they can do more volume. A lot of experts say the more you create content, the faster you get at it. And I agree, you do get better at content creation. You do get faster the more you do it because you know, it's a general principle, right? The more we do something, the better we get at it. However, there are a lot of people putting out a lot of content that's not working. And so they're not really improving by that much. So doing more and doing it faster is not always the best solution for everyone. Would you agree? It's no point doing more if it's not working. So some people don't take enough time with their content. They rush it. They put out content that they haven't really taken the time to craft properly and it's not quality work so this is for you if you have the opposite problem and crafting effective content is taking way too long now crafting effective content should take some time we should take time and care in our content what I'm talking about here is 
when we're spending way too long and getting so perfectionist in the detail at the expense of all the other things that need to be done in our business because there's lots of other things that need our attention and getting faster at content is going to save you time so that you can put your your focus in the other areas that need um, attention as well but we want to get faster at it and produce content that actually does its job the job of content is to attract convert and nurture attract nurture and convert attract the right clients attract the right audience look after them give them value nurture them and then convert them the you know a percentage of those people into clients now i created a quadrant and i literally created this today so it's the first time i've ever shared it with anyone and because i was writing this out and i thought this is a quadrant. I can see it in my mind. I'm going to draw this up on a PowerPoint. And so I created a PowerPoint and it really helped me just to see it really logically. So I want to share it with you. It's called the content efficiency matrix. So the content efficiency matrix is basically, we can look at the four different ways of producing content. First of all, I want to talk about what efficiency is. Efficiency is the ability to produce produce the outcome with the least amount of wasted resources. And in this case, you know, resources could be time, money, energy. In this case, we're talking about time. So it's maximizing your output while you're minimizing your input. And the way I see it when it comes to content creation, it's speed plus effectiveness. So this matrix really shows us the speed versus the effectiveness. What is effectiveness? Effectiveness when it comes to content creation is response. So getting a response from your content, Enga people engaging with your content. Likes aren't a big deal, but you know they can add to social proof. Comments are great, even better are shares. So we want engagement with our content, but we more importantly want people to actually reach out to you and private message you on social media. We want people to reply to your emails. That's a direct response. Booking into your calendar for a strategy session, that's a really warm lead. We don't just want any leads, we want engaged leads. We want warm leads. Buying your coaching or program means that they are obviously gone from hot leads into becoming a client. So let's go through this matrix. So the first top left-hand corner is ineffective and slow. This means you're creating content that takes ages and it doesn't work. You're getting very low, poor response or no response. So this is basically showing that just because you're taking a long time to create content doesn't mean that the content is good. Doesn't mean the quality is good enough for the content to be doing its job. So taking longer doesn't necessarily mean it's better. So if your content takes you a, lot, a long time, but it produces a, a bad result, then it's better to actually probably not spend all that time on it. <laughs> the next box is, the top right box is ineffective, but fast, ineffective, but fast. So if you're just pumping out any random content, it doesn't really matter whether you get faster at it. If it doesn't work, there's no point. It's only good to increase your pace and the volume of your content creation if you're actually also producing quality because getting faster at content, it's only a good thing when you're, you're using compelling content that actually gets you a response. The next one, the bottom left-hand corner, the bottom quadrant is effective but slow. And this is where you create content, it takes ages, but it works. So it's work, it works. So it's better because it's effective, meaning you're getting response from it, but it's taking you a long time. And you can't actually produce much content because it takes so long. So you put out a very low volume of content, meaning your results are really slow. So it's better than the top two quadrants. It's better because it's actually effective. It's actually working, but I think a lot of you probably fall into this category. You're putting out not much content. And if you just increase that, you know, if you're putting out one piece of content every two weeks and it's really effective and it's getting a response, imagine if you started putting out two or three pieces of content a week, you could, you know, five times or even 10 times your impact if you just put out a lot more content. Now, I'm not saying you need to post every single day, you don't. And a lot of people make six figures as a coach without posting every single day. 
But if you are taking so much time to do it, can you see that as soon as you don't get as many leads come in, you're not going to get as many uh, people book into strategy sessions. You're not going to get as many people sign up. So the whole pipeline slows down. So what we want instead is the bottom right-hand quadrant, which is effective and fast. This is what we want to get to, effective and fast. So the goal is to get quicker at creating content while not compromising on the quality of your work that leads to results. And by results, I mean people moving along your journey towards working with you. So the goal is to eliminate all of the content above the line, all the ineffective content, whether it's slow or whether it's fast. Now, sometimes we start off ineffective and we just do it and we do it and we do it and it starts becoming more effective. So ideally, we keep doing ineffective content until it becomes effective. And the goal is to reduce the effective but slow content and increase the effective and fast content. If you keep repeating the same behavior of overthinking and second guessing, you're going to keep in that category of slow. And to get faster at creating content and have time to create more content, it actually helps to first understand why you are taking so long in the first place. Like why is it actually taking so long for you in the first place? And that's what I want to look at now. So I've identified that there are five main reasons why it takes so long. And often these are deeper than most people think, and they actually go below the awareness of a lot of people. And that's why I want to reveal some of these things to you and bring some of them to your awareness or consciousness uh, that, hey, that actually might be me. I haven't really thought about it in that way, or I know that this is happening, but I haven't really looked at why, and I haven't decided to do anything about it. Because otherwise, no matter how much you do, you probably won't get better. But when you know the reason of why it's taking you so long, then you can decide what to do about it. So the, the reason that most people don't change is because they often don't realize why why it's taking them so long. So I'm going to run through five things that in my experience are the top five things that lead to people taking too long in their content creation. Now, the good thing about that is that you can use this reason to your advantage. You can leverage it. You can leverage the reason. You can ask yourself, how can this be helpful? How can it be helpful for me to know this rather than this is an enemy, I just need to get rid of it. We can use it. We can say, okay, what's the purpose of this? And how can I leverage? How can I maximize it? So if you're taking notes, write this down. Is this helpful so far? Those of you that are on live, uh, take some notes, grab a notebook or a Google Doc or something and write this down. Number one, not being clear on your message. This is a major reason why content takes so long is because you don't have a clear message. So you're basically writing to multiple different people. If you've got multiple avatars, this makes it very um, challenging when it comes to creating efficiency around your content. If you haven't got clear on those core messages that you are saying to people, what are the, the clear problems that your idle client has? Do you know how to describe, describe it concisely in a crystal clear way that your idle client goes, yes, Oh my gosh, she gets it. She gets me. You've crafted language. You've taken the time. Like content is a lot quicker if you take the time up front at the front end to work on your messaging. Your messaging is how do I actually write to people? What do I say? Who am I writing to? And the more you understand that, the faster your content will be. So for a lot of you, it's actually a messaging problem. You're not clear on your messaging. You're not clear how to communicate valuably, valuably, concisely, clearly, emotionally, in a compelling, engaging way to your ideal clients. And that is why it takes you so long because you're constantly having to kind of reinvent the wheel. Uh, you're constantly having to think, oh, how do I word this in, a way, in the right way? If you don't understand their fears and frustrations, their dreams and desires, and really um, know how to speak to them, you'll find that content creation takes a lot of time. So it's not being clear on your message. Number two, 
Another reason why it might take you so long is because you're avoiding other tasks. Content can be our comfort zone. Creating content can be really fun for a lot of us. I love creating content. It's one of my favorite things to do. Creating PowerPoints, creating presentations, creating videos, creating blogs. I really, well, blogs, not so much. Emails, social media captions. I actually really enjoy it. So that can actually be our, our comfort zone. And in my experience, in about, I don't know, probably 90 to 95% or more, of cases, the reason that we're avoiding other tasks is because we're not good at them. So it's actually a skill issue. It's a skill issue. So for example, we might spend a lot of time creating content because it's more fun than facing other things in our business, like learning tech, setting up a marketing funnel, setting up an email nurture sequence, uh, booking calls, like booking people into sales calls. <laughs> Is anyone resonating with this? I only understand this because I do it myself. I get lost in content. I take too long a lot of the time. And these reasons are why I take too long as well. So I am with you on this. This is not me saying, hey, I've conquered this. I've nailed it. I'm so good at this. I can talk about this because I understand the problem completely because it's me. I have this problem as well. I struggle. I do take... I do take a lot more time to create content than I would like to. Um, but as I've got clear on my messaging and as I've recognized that I'm procrastinating, <laughs> which is a, a term I coined for creating content as opposed to doing some of the other hard stuff, it's also similar to procrastinating. learning. So procrastinating learning, it's kind of like it's, it's equally as costly twin. Procrastinating. learning, does anyone relate to this? This is where we learn, learn, learn instead of do, do, do. And we gather, 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 and we consume. And it's often much more fun and easy to do than actually do something hard. The challenge is we mistake consumption for transformation. I was talking to this, uh, talking about this with my friend Ray yesterday and we were talking about how because we've both got heaps of books behind us in our in our Zoom background and and uh, we were talking about how we just get so caught up sometimes in learning and reading and we forget that we just retain so little of it so it's so much better to actually learn less but apply it so that could be something going on for you as well is avoiding other tasks number three and this is a big one that I could talk about for a long time, but I'm just going to touch briefly on it. Number three is fear of judgment. Fear of judgment. This shows up in not feeling good enough, in caring what people think too much, in imposter syndrome, in fearing criticism. It shows up in feeling uncomfortable, maybe getting on camera, uncomfortable putting our work out into the world, uncomfortable saying what we really think. And so we water down our message it can show up in fearing silence. So actually fearing that we don't get any engagement or we hardly get any engagement. And then we mean that we make it mean that we're, that that piece of content is not good and that we are not good enough. Does anyone relate to this? I only know this because I've been through it myself. It's important to identify the fear of judgment and what you can learn about it, what you can learn from it and what you can do about it. What do you want to do about it? Why is the fear there? What's the purpose of the fear? And am I happy to keep this fear? Like if the fear of judgment is causing you to overthink and to second guess, and it's costing you all this time that you could be spending on other things in your business or in your personal life. So there's quite a big cost to it. And you say, well, of course I don't want to hold on to the fear. Then why do we? Why are we holding on to it? It is a decision. It's a decision that we need to decide what do I need to believe instead and what do I need to do instead? So it starts at the thinking level. What do I need to do? Uh, what do I need to think? And what do I need to do? So you might say, I need to believe that I am just creating for my ideal client and no one else. What am I going to do? I'm going to put out a piece of content. I'm going to put a timer on. I'm going to give myself a time limit and I'm going to get it out there. I'm not even going to look at whether I get likes or not. 
So if you decide that this is not worth holding on to this fear, what are you going to believe? What are you going to do? If you knew that your content was really valuable and really powerful for your idle clients, for the right people, would you still would you still care about fear of judgment? You know, if we think about the fear and where's it pointing, like what's actually driving it, um, for a lot of people, it's actually because they just don't have the the skill. They just don't have the skill of being able to do to create content that's actually effective. And this brings me to number four and five. Number four and fear of, uh, fear of judgment drives these two things. Number four, you don't have a plan. There's no strategy. So you waste a lot of time thinking about what to post. And then you overthink it or you do it on the fly. You do it in a hurry because you're, you're distracted and it takes you longer because you're trying to get it right. You haven't pre-thought about it. You haven't pre-planned it. There's a saying you've probably heard 10 minutes of planning equals an hour in execution. So if you don't have a plan, you might write this whole big email or a whole big social media post or create this whole carousel. And then you think, why am I even talking about that? Like that doesn't even fit anywhere. What's the call to action going to be? Where am I leading people? You know, you haven't thought about the overarching plan to lead people on a journey to becoming a client. So a lot of people will create content without even thinking about the purpose of the content piece without, you know, if you don't have a strategy, you're often not even thinking about your call to actions and working backwards. So number four, you don't have a plan. Number five, you don't know what to say and you don't know how to say it. And this comes down to you don't have the skills and you don't have the structure. You can have the best content strategy in the world, but if you don't have the skills to execute it, you can spend a whole lot of time, but it just still doesn't work. So this is spending a lot of time, but still ineffective. So if it's if your content's not getting you the results you want, really it starts at that skill level, whether that's speaking on video, your ability to influence, your ability to move people, engage people's attention, the words you choose, the messaging you choose, the rapport you build, the credibility you build, all of these skill sets, all of these things that fit into the overarching communication skill set, writing and speaking to influence. It's really about influence. And when you have that skill, you'll find that the fear of judgment often starts to actually fall away. You know, a big reason why people are scared of what people think is because they don't have the skill set. So they are getting all this evidence come back that people aren't engaging. So they think, oh, I'm not good. But if you had the skill set, you would be so much more confident. So I guess if there's one key point I want to really bring across in this video is that when you have the skill of creating compelling content, when you have the messaging, when you have the structure, when you have the strategy, when you know what you're doing, then, and you stop procrastinating learning and procrastinating creating, then you can start producing effective content fast. Your marketing becomes so much easier, so much more enjoyable. And most importantly, it works. It gets you clients. You attract more clients into your business. And anyone can do this. That's what I love about this. Anyone can do this. Even if you're just starting out as a content creator or you're seasoned, you can keep developing this skill. And if you want to know how to do it, I have created a new free online express workshop. So some of you saw, some of you were probably there. I ran a one day workshop and I, I ran it over two days and I got incredible feedback. And a lot of people said it was just such a game changer. I talked a lot about content creation skills and how to build those skills. And I talked about brain-based content creation, speaking to the different parts of the brain, how to influence, how to get your content to actually lead to clients. I was blown away by the messages that I received and the feedback that I received back. So I decided to run this express workshop for those of you who missed them. I'm actually running two and they are next week. I'm sharing how that, how you can use your content to get more clients, high quality clients using psychology 
and using my proven compelling content formula. It's perfect for you no matter where you're at in your journey. I'm sharing the best content that I've taken from that one day workshop and condensed it into a mini version. And it will equip you with the tools that you need to attract your client, attract your ideal clients fast and also predictably and consistently. I only run this workshop once a year. So if you want to know how to do this, drop the word workshop into the comments now and I will get you all the details and or just DM me the word workshop and I'll get you the details. So quick recap, the real reason why content creation takes you so long, you'll find yourself somewhere in here, I believe. You're not clear on your messaging. You're avoiding other tasks, fear of judgment. You don't have a plan. You don't know what to say and how to say it. If there's any other reason, I'd love to hear it. I have a feeling that you'll find yourself in one of those five. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please pop a like or a comment. I really appreciate your interaction. And remember, if you want to get a free ticket to the Compelling Content Express workshop, just pop the word workshop below in the comments and I will message you the details. In the meantime, take care, my friends. Keep showing up and keep shining. Keep sharing your message because the world is waiting for your words. Have a beautiful evening. Talk soon. Bye.